hello 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 welcome to another live vid iq trading session awesome awesome having you guys here really really cool i am i always like to get on a little bit earlier chat to you guys see what you guys are up to obviously have my coffee because well nothing happens without uh, <laughs> without caffeine let's be honest um, so always nice to have you guys here i've seen a lot of people already here london terry 1.1 thousand subscribers on his road to 2000 so we definitely need to have a drink for that obviously right Mm. Um, I just see now, um, Ari Fox on the way to a hundred subscribers. That is pretty rad. That is pretty awesome. Um, oh, Lily Craft Nook is here, and she got a channel review, I believe, yesterday. So well done for making that happen. That is pretty pretty rad. Very very awesome. Um, guys, if you are here for channel reviews, I hate to disappoint you, but we're not doing channel reviews today. Channel reviews get done on a Tuesday. Today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to take you through the A to Z or A to Z of how to get your video ranked, how to get love from YouTube, how to get those views, how to get those subscribers. That is what we're here for. So that is pretty much um, why, why, why we're here. Um, okay, who just here? Oh, Classy Beats. Well, hey, hi, man. Um, just hit 1,050 subscribers. Boom. Love that. That is pretty, pretty cool. You guys are doing awesome. Look at this. Um, people are on the way to awesome, awesome milestones. That is very, very cool. Um, Amulet, yes, we have 465,000 subscribers and only 67 people watching. You may leave at any point in time. I always love these people who come on, get these amazing free advice, and they still complain. Bye-bye. You're more than welcome to leave. Cheers. Everyone wave goodbye. Bye-bye, Amulet. Bye-bye. Good luck with your channel. Good luck with your journey. Have a good day. All right. And for the rest of you who are really here to learn amongst real YouTubers who are going to make this thing rock, this is why we're here. This is why you guys are here. So that is awesome. I am love having you guys here, despite the one or two people that are like, you know, yank, 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 yeah. All right. Very, very cool. Um, so just wanted just to get an idea from people that are here. Um, who is here for the first time? If you're here for the first time, drop a hashtag new into that chat. Hashtag new. Let's see who are new. Let's see who are old. And yes, there'll definitely be chocolate cake involved in here. And if you guys have been here before, you know that that's coming. Okay, so everyone say goodbye to Amulet. Thank you for his lovely contribution. And for the rest of us that are still here, who is new? Who has been here before? Always love to see, um, to see people that are cool here. And um, remember, guys, today is the A to Z. This is how we're going to be working. So, um, oh, Vibe Trading is new. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, vibe Trading is new. Um, Natalia says, hello. Um, who's new? Okay, GPR replays. Me, I am. I am new. Um, right, Sixzy. Oh, I'm going to butcher names today so badly. I can just feel it. Um, also new here as well. Um, Winter X is new. Um, Ethan Wreck is new. Malik um, Junaid is new. I don't think I'm doing messing up too badly at this stage of the game. Um, yes, you guys are coming through nice. And look at all these new people. Guys, this is what it's all about. The reason at VidIQ we spend lots of time, lots of money, lots of energy creating these sessions and going live with you guys is because we're here to help you. We want to help you guys grow. Look at all these awesome milestones. Look at all these new people. Look at all these old people who just love and come in to support their community, which is what I always dig. The art is heaven. Our mod is in the house. Is got an um, Is going to be dropping some links here. Um, remember, big rule. If you're here for sub for sub, review my channel, come watch my videos, all that nonsense. Firstly, it's not a way to grow. Second of all, we don't tolerate that you're out of here as well. We're pretty hardcore when it, com when it comes to that kind of thing. We're here to help real people. Um, if you're here to learn and you really want to get this YouTube game right, you really want to grow your channel, you're committed, you're taking some time out of your day to be here, this is why we love you. This is why we're going to help you and you will succeed. You just got to do some sort of process and I'm going to show you all of that in this upcoming um, tutorial that we're going to go through. Now remember, for those who are new, so let me tell you how this works. There are two sessions. The first session is basically a how to use vidIQ, how to get your videos ranked, how to get that YouTube love, how to get those subscribers. If you are not using vidIQ at the moment, that's totally cool. Look at the link below. Everyone okay? There's a link below in this um, stream, and that's going to give you free vidIQ for 30 days. If you can unlock those, all these tools I'm about to show you for 30 days, you will see how it will change your channel. It's going to be insane. Now, if you don't want to pay for vidIQ, that's cool too. We have a free tool because we love our creators. 
So you can always use the free tool until you're ready to make um, to make that commitment and release more of that data that you absolutely need. So if you not if you haven't used VidIQ, that is fine. Check out in the link below. You'll be able to see. Um, you'll be able to get that VidIQ for free. So, but you don't need to have it for this to work. So step one is I'm gonna show you all the tools. I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks that YouTube of stuff that actually works, stuff that makes all our channels blow up. Remember at VidIQ, a lot of us are creators ourselves. So we understand the frustration that you guys go through where you go ahead and you create a video, you put it out there and then nothing happens. We get it because we feel the same pressure ourselves. So we're building tools and we want to help you break through that barrier. So that is very important. Then the second bit of this is basically Q and A. This is your opportunity that you and I get back on here and you guys send the question in the chat. We'll be able to discuss it and then everybody benefits because a lot of people have the exact same question. This is like, we friends, this is we hanging out. Feel free to ask me anything. YouTube related, of course, <laughs> um, that's gonna help you with your channel. Maybe something that you've been stuck with, something that you want to help with, something that you're not sure what does it actually mean. That will be the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, but save those questions for a little bit later for the Q&A, and that's how we're gonna get kind of going for that. Um, remember, when you're gonna do the question, start with hashtag question, so that I'll be able to pick it up because this chat, as you can see, is going through pretty quickly. So let's say hello to some people. Um, Okay, as we're doing that, by the way, where are you guys coming in from? What city or what country you're coming in from? Always awesome to know who's here. And then at the Artist Heaven just dropped an amazing link. This is the VidIQ Academy. We have an entire course dedicated to helping you grow your channel. Grow your channel in 30 days. Um, you, you can have access to that and you guys can definitely go check it out. So who is here from around the world? We always like to say hello to people. Um, I love the way that you guys say hello to each other and you hang out. That is the community. That is what we're trying to bring. Angelique May just subscribe and boom, that's how we get this party started. Okay, in full bloom in Dallas. I'm also in Dallas and freezing today. This weather is just, just ridiculous. Rain hasn't stopped either. All right, who we got, who we got? South African all the way. Woohoo, Curtis, zero four. Uh, yeah, Joburg, Cape Town, where are you from? I'm ex Joburg as well. So, Germany, um, Hamburg, that's from Mux, uh, Makusan. Told you I'm going to mess up names. Classy Beat is from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, hi, guys, coming from Brighton. Hey, Brighton in the UK, we're going to be there for VidCon. In case anybody's in VidCon London next week, definitely come and find us. We'll sit and we'll go through your channel there at VidCon. If you're there, definitely come and find us. Um, Underwater is from Underwater, is from Boston. Ali Al Saud just subscribed. Boom, that's how it's done, people. Okay, um, Lily Craft Nook is from the Bay Area in Northern California. And we've got Minneapolis. I never can say that right the first time. And that is the Otters Heaven. Nottingham, UK, awesome. And um, that is from Mubit, a, me what? a movie. Oh, sorry, that just went straight past me. Okay, hi from Vancouver. That's Joel says hello. Hi from Toronto. A lot of people from Canada. It's a good community developing in Canada. It's really, really awesome to see that. Um, Classical Pipes is Rally New um, NC, Northern Carolina. Sorry, still new to the US, so I'm getting used to this. Um, RFS Player is from Sweden. Look how, how awesome <laughs> VidIQ is Liron's office. <laughs> um, Noreen Huff, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. You rock and you're going to be... Awesome, awesome stuff coming at you. Um, our team is pretty hardworking at developing content for you guys on our channel. Rob puts out amazing videos, deep analysis, cool stuff that you guys can do. We also have an amazing blog, lots of insight there. Definitely go check it out. And if you're into podcasts, that's what I do, where we go really deep dive into storytelling, getting brand deals, um, growing your channel, understanding the algorithm, go and check, check that out. It's called Tube Talk. So go to vidiq.com slash tube talk and all find Tube Talk in your podcast application. We're on Apple and Spotify and Google and all the rest of them as well. All right, so definitely come and hang out with us there as well. So who else have we got? We have got um, an, 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 an Animatical Production says Spam. Okay, I'm not sure what that even means. Right, Radio, um, Radio Boomba is from Los Angeles. Awesome, nice to have you here. Um, hello from Saturn, that's Elian Plays. Um, good, good connectivity on Saturn. Okay, I hope so. Sounds good. Um, right, who else have we got here? The we've got. Oh, people are coming in. Am I like scrolling so fast? We got so TRV. Hello from Algeria. Hello, Classic Pipes. Yup, 
Okay, um, so Thierry, oh, hello from Algeria. We said hello twice to you from Algeria. Nice to have you hanging out with us here. Um, I just got to push a couple of buttons here. Oh, look at that. Jatro um, Futoro just subscribe. Boom, that's how it's done. Love it. Um, Arsenal Alex is from London. Awesome. Um, are you coming to VidCon? VidCon next week. Come and see us if you are coming. We're going to hang out there. We're going to have an awesome thing going on in our booth. We're going to go through your channels. I'm just going to have a lot of fun. Lots of good information. Rob Wilson speaking. You might even be able to take a photo with Rob Wilson because he's like that kind of celebrity. But I'll hook you up. Don't worry. We'll be good. We'll be good. Um, PB props just out of side of London, UK. Um, yeah, it, well, lots of things are just outside of London. I used to work in a place called Watford when I lived there, and that was just outside of uh, of London. But that M25, whew, that freeway, that parking lot is just was not so much fun. Killer Gaming, Croatia, awesome. Yo yo, what? Yo yo, finds Tampa, Florida, and then we've got Shane Tian Comedy with some eyes just checking us out, wondering if this is cringeworthy or actually going to get some value out of this. Well, we hope it's going to get some value out of that. Okay, so guys, again, for those who are just joining us, remember, don't ask for sub for subs. That stuff never flies here. It doesn't help you with your channel. That really, really never works out. Um, you know, we're here to grow our true YouTube channel the right way with lots of YouTube love, getting those views, getting those subscribers. That is why we're here. This is the real YouTubers, people hanging out here who want to do this for real. So ask you for sub for sub. You're going to see you're going to get ignored anyway because we understand that that is not a strategy to grow. Riaz Barry just hit that subscribe button. Boom. Anyone hit that thumbs up button? Does anyone like the stream so far? Well, if you do and you have a moment, just, you know, click that thumbs up. Just, you know, I need that validation because, well, we wired that way. All right, I'm going to have a sip of coffee first. Oh. Vinny Arts Language is from Hong Kong. Awesome. What time is it by you? It must be pretty late at that side, side of the world. So that's the first thing. Don't ask for sub for sub. Then the next thing I need to tell you is that you're going to get the first part is the step-by-step -step instruction A to Z or A to Z of how to grow your YouTube channel. I'm going to teach you all the rules. I'm going to teach you what works, what doesn't work. I'm going to show you what stuff that YouTube loves to see and how we can give you that information. Landon Terry just subscribed. Boom. Well done. I need a, uh, Rob has a bell for sound effects. When uh, I also need a bell for sound effects, I think. Boom. Well, there's my sound effect. Okay, just subscribe. Awesome. Um, so we're going to teach you how all the rules and things that you need to do. Then the second bit is Q&A. That's when you guys drop some questions into the chat and you ask me your question about YouTube, about what you need to do, things that you may have been stuck with, and then I can absolutely help you out and I'm happy to stay on for as long as you guys have questions. Sometimes we go for half an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, depending on what on you guys. We're here for you. The reason we do this is to help you guys grow. This is what VidIQ is all about. We just want to see you guys hitting those milestones. If you were here earlier in the conversation, you saw so many people just leveling up, going from 100 to 200, from 1,000 on the road to 2,000. You know, that is what it's about, getting that next milestone, next milestone, the next milestone. So that is what we want to see. <laughs> Ethan Rex, A to Z or A to Z? Well, I'm from South Africa, so it's A to Z. So in the US, it's A to Z, and people get really confused when I said Z. I don't know. Well, so... I'm catering to everybody. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Multi-electro, a lagging production. I need sleep. <laughs> oh, that's actually a good question, uh, a good comment. If you're missing anything on this, by the way, it will be available on the replay. You know, if people got to log off. you got things to do. You want to come back to this later. Maybe you missed something. Go back and go back and check out what um, this will be available later. Sorry, I'm just getting my words here. Um, are you giving us the code? Yes, of course. In the description, there should be a link with the code. Um, and just click on that link. Um, if maybe one of our mods can check it out to double check that the code is indeed there. In fact, I'll look for it quickly. Uh, let's just click on show more. Yeah, okay. The link is definitely there. Um, in fact, someone can just drop it into the chat. That'll be awesome. But the code is a webinar, but you've got to go to a specific link. And it's our way of saying thank you for hanging out with us. And we, we want to give you 30 days to unlock all this value on your channel. I've seen channel change completely. Hey, another South African. I always catch these guys out. Um, Jade Energy, J-E. Okay, from South Africa? Cool. Um, energy is what you guys definitely need in South Africa. Good old Eskom. Woohoo, for the win. Okay, no, we're not, we're, not, we're not going there. 
Um, the code, um, Team Rush says, what code? Well, that's if you want the vidIQ. The link will be in the description. You do not need to have vidIQ to get benefit out of this. Um, obviously, we'd like to encourage you to do it so you can see all the tools I'm going to show you and how you can maximize these for your channel. So that is also awesome, awesome to be able to do that. Um, okay, thanks. Yep, no problem. Team Rush says webinar. Yep, that is indeed the, co the code. Um, it's so nice seeing the same people coming in, new people coming in, and then the old people coming in to support each other. This is what it's all about. Um, we've got about, I don't know, eight minutes or so before we're officially going live. I always just like to come and hang out here and just make sure that you guys are cool and we can kind of answer any questions right at the beginning. Remember, um, if you have a question, start with hashtag question so that we are going to be able to see that. Um, Okay, shout out for Karen Ganor from India. Woohoo, welcome, awesome. Um, yeah, le, um, La Gagging Production, we're gonna start a couple of more minutes because technically we just go, um, we live on top of the hour. I just like to come and hang out with you guys, see what you guys do. Um, and speaking of what you do, oh, hold on, we've got a, um, yeah, so speaking of what you guys do, what do you guys do on your channel? Um, I have a technology channel myself. What do you guys do? Are you into gaming? Are you into motoring, fashion? Let me know down here um, and I'm going to be able to check it out. I'm going to get a drink. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably a good idea. I'm armed with caffeine, so I'm cool with that as well. So let me know what you guys do out here. And um, we want to be able to see who says shout me out. Mamas underscore squad, shout me out. There is your shout out. I hope you subscribe to our channel because you're cool like that. And maybe you gave this video a thumbs up already. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, who is here? Uh, okay. No, we got shout out. We already done that. All right, I do animation, animal, uh, animatical production. I do animation. That's pretty cool. Gaming channel uh, from Sean K. The King. What kind of gaming, Sean? Um, what do you do on your channel? You can't be all games, otherwise you're never going to succeed. What's going to make me come to you? Margaret Murray just hit that subscribe button. Boom. I still need a bell. I still need a bell. It's not the same. Um, I make memes and Hong Kong themed videos like gaming production. Very cool. Okay, hello. Who else have we got here? Um... Right, Maklusan does gaming. Awesome, what kind of gaming? Um, gaming channel, some tutorials I see here from um, Yet's Pro Prodigy, cool. Um, Brandon James Vlogs, I travel around the UK with friends and family, exploring unique towns and cities, and of course, eating great food as well. Very cool, nice to have you. Um, right, does my channel name give you a hint? Woman with ADHD channel, hmm. No, I wonder what you do. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a great point, right? If your channel tells you what, what you do, you're off to a great start. Maybe if you're still starting out, you kind of haven't figured out, this is a good opportunity to know wh what you specialize in. When people see your channel, are they gonna know what your channel is instantly about? If it isn't, maybe you should look at changing it. It's gotta be memorable. That's the big thing about YouTube. I don't remember that gaming channel, but if it was the Fortnite How To Level Up gaming channel, Okay, I know it's Fortnite, I know it's a how-to, I'm gonna probably remember it. Or if it's something like Dude Perfect, okay, it's such a weird, cool name, you're going to remember to go there, okay? So that's a great little tidbit right on the start. Everyday Delights, I make cooking videos. Well, good, you're gonna enjoy my chocolate cake experience. For those who have been here before for chocolate cake, give a thumbs up for chocolate cake in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, you'll see what I mean. Okay, racing game, MVM Gaming, that's a racing game. Cool, Fortnite channel, Sean the King, there we go. That's what I mean about being specific. That is how you win on YouTube. Um, right, I talk about stock market, that's pretty cool. Vibe training, very nice, okay, love it. That's good education stuff, people are confused about it. I myself know nothing about it. That was something that would actually be check it out. Um, right, the artist haven't just dropped a link. I don't know to what, but I'm hoping it's good. <laughs> If she dropped a link, you know it's gonna be good, right? Um, F1 video and racing game from Lemos Lemu 55. Oh, let me, okay, okay, I kind of get it. ASMR beats. I like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah, that also sounds pretty cool. All right, here, here, the oh, Paul Peck drywall tube, just in time for chocolate cake. So he knows what that. What's up? He got, <laughs> we got a couple of thumbs up already there, right? Um, what? Okay, now I'm gonna mess this up so badly. So I apologize. Meat boss. I'm a nutritionist. Very cool. Very cool. Um, that's very nice. I think there's a lot of things with keto. There's a lot of things with uh, just just that whole industry is really really awesome. Awesome on um, on YouTube. So great little niche there. Malik Junaid. Um, I do mountain biking. Very cool. 
Um, oh, and travel videos. So do you travel with your mountain bike? Because that will be epic to watch that. Um, Azud Zane does AutoCAD. Oh, their computer assisted design. Very cool. Um, paper crafting, Lily Craft Nook. Could have guessed that. Um, my, uh, hi guys, my channel has video gaming cra Clash Royale. That's on 10 Naruto. All right, thumbs up. All right, thumbs up is cool. Uh, who gave, who did that thumbs up? I like to say, thank you for that. Um, toy review gets done by Super Ryan Toys. Um, yeah, uh, probably not the real like big Ryan toy reviews, but okay, let's go with that because kids market is very weird at the moment. If you're into the kids market, you're going through a bit of a tough time, but it will be okay. It will ride itself out. You just got to designate your videos accordingly and make sure that you tell YouTube the real truth because they do know they have AI systems to detect the stuff. So write it out. Mark your stuff as for kids if it is for kids. Don't try to trick the algorithm. It was smarter than all of us. So that's my kind of big advice. I've seen channel die and then a couple of weeks later just rebound because they've told YouTube the real thing. So make sure you do that. Um, okay, so we're about to get started. A couple of more. Um, oh, Neo Nitro. I do game modding. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Um, I rebuild old cars on a budget from old car guy. Look at that. That's what I mean about your channel name matching up your um, with what your channel does, right? Yeah, Copa, the Chen Zeg um, MFK. Yeah, exactly. So Copa has kind of did a bit of a hoo-ha in the industry, a bit of a shake-up, but it's okay. We'll be fine. Sajid for him just hit that subscribe button. So that's two thumbs up for doing that. Awesome. Lovely to have you here. Um, Yo-Yo Fines. Oh, what was that? Just disappeared. Yo-Yo Fines. Um, Abhishek Pradeep, um, Pradeep. How badly did I do on that one? Okay, was it, uh, was it acceptable? All right, welcome to VidIQ. Really appreciate you. Yeah, um, what's it like? Um, like, 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 G Ging production. I'm probably not saying that one right either. Kids market, no ads, no revenue from ads, no money from media and channel. Yes, 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 and yes. However, don't forget these still advertising budgets from these big toy companies. What are they going to do with it? Maybe they have got different ways of engaging with you. Now it's an ideal time to go reach out to brands and say, hey, I'm not getting any money from ads. You've got all this budget. Maybe we can work something out. Maybe we can chat to them. So we cover a lot of this, by the way, on the podcast. If you look on Tube Talk, if you go subscribe to that, there is a lot of episode about working with brands. I spoke with one of the very high ranking people in one of the agencies of how they choose their influencers. There's lots of tips there. So if you're looking to monetize your channel off YouTube, not just having AdSense, definitely, definitely go and check that one out. It's really, really cool episodes to hear. Uh, just lots of tips. Um, if somebody can, oh, in fact, I'm going to see if I can drop this. Um, okay, hold on. vidiq.com slash tube talk. Let's see if that works. P. All right, I'm going to try that. Does that work? Okay, well, there we go. There's the link to the tube talk. If you guys are going to check it out, go, go ahead and do that. Um, Ethan Rack, I do what I do music videos um, on the show Jojo Bizarre Adventures. Ooh, look at you. That's pretty cool. Music videos. That's awesome. Okay. Um, how do you deal with copyright and people taking your work? That must be a whole interesting avenue as well. So that's quite a cool episode to go into. Oh, okay. Um, right. By the way, um, so again, one more time. We've got one more minute to go. Remember, um, sub for sub, no good. No, no, that's not going to fly on this channel. Um, things like asking your questions. Absolutely. That's why we're here. Save them for the Q&A. I come back online and we go through your question. I'll go through your, your topics. Don't ask questions like, how do I get more views and more subscribers? We all want that. We understand. The answer to that is the first part of this of the same stream. It's going to tell you exactly how to get those subscribers and get those views. How to do it the right way. And then hang out for the Q&A where you and I get on and we chat and we go through questions that you might have specifically to do with your channel, with other people's channels, YouTube in general, collaborations, monetization, all, all of that stuff. Happy to answer all of those kind of questions. So if you guys are ready, and then hopefully do not mess up on pressing the buttons here because, well, let's be honest, stuff happens here. Um, so I think we're going to be ready to go. So I think let's get going. So who said start? GPR underscore replays. I'm going to start. Up delays, just subscribe. It's a perfect opportunity to hit that start button. So let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. 
Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to another vidIQ training session. My name is Liron Segev and I am the Director of Customer Success here at vidIQ. What does that mean? It means that every single day I work with creators big and small, helping you guys rock your channel, get you to that next level. And that's what we're going to do today. The cool thing about vidIQ is a lot of us are actually creators ourselves. A lot of us actually have our own channels and we understand those frustrations. We know what happens when you spend all those time, hours, kind of very carefully creating those videos and then it doesn't work and you get really upset, really despondent. So that's what the solution that we create is all about helping you kind of get over that hurdle, unblock that. If you don't have vidIQ at the moment, that's totally cool. You can hang out with us and see everything we have to offer. If you do have vidIQ, the free version, in the description below, there's a 30-day free trial. Go and grab it because in 30 days, Everything that I'm telling you today, if you do that, it will change your channel for absolute ever. So definitely go and check it out. You'll see there's so much value. Things will unlock today that have been locked forever. YouTube is essentially made up of three Ds. And you have to do all three of those Ds to be able to rock your channel. So the first D is discover. You need to be discovered by the YouTube algorithm, by the search engine, because the most amazing content that lives somewhere out there in the world that nobody knows about, that you haven't labeled correctly, you haven't told YouTube about you, is just pointless. The second D, you need to deliver. In other words, people have given you their click. They've stopped what they're doing. They've clicked on your video. Are you delivering? Did you click back? Did you get people to come to your video when it's bad quality and bad audio? So this you need to deliver because when you deliver, this is such a crucial metric for YouTube. It says, hey, this video looks pretty cool. I am going to start distributing it, which is the third D. I'm going to distribute it to a much wider audience so that that wider audience can see your content, not just your subscribers. It brings it up to the bigger YouTube community. And if those people are watching because you're delivering, then it will bring even bigger and even bigger and even bigger audience. And then your channel really, really explodes when that happens. Happened to me. I can tell you from personal experience that it's just one of those things that when it happens, it is absolutely incredible. But you've got to focus on delivery. You've got to focus on your quality of your content. But today, it's not about theory. Today, it's all about real practical step-by-step -step instruction of what you need to do to get those three Ds. So with all that being ready, and we are ready to kind of get you really on that journey, this is where we begin, and we're going to begin in the kitchen. Yes, that's where all YouTube begins. It begins in the kitchen. Not only do you have your cup of coffee, but now I want you to go to your kitchen. I want you to open a random cupboard, grab some random ingredients, stick them in a bowl, mix them all up, stick them in the oven, and let's see if a chocolate cake comes out. What are the odds of the chocolate cake come out? Mm, pretty much not much, right? And the reason for it, because you've done random stuff, you've mixed it together randomly, you've stuck it in the oven, in the oven for some random time, there's no way a chocolate cake is going to come out. And yet that is how we approach our YouTube as well. We go out there, we grab our camera, we go and film, we come home, we edit, we cut, we paste, we create a cool video, we throw it together at some random title, description and tags, upload it and then go, I hope something comes out. I hope my chocolate cake works. I hope my video works. That's never going to work. However, what if I said to you, look, here are the, here's the ingredients. Here is what you need to buy. This is how you mix it with these ratios. And then you mix it in this format and then you stick it in the oven for this long period of time. Well, what are the odds of chocolate cake coming out then? Much better. Well, YouTube is about following a recipe, very much like the chocolate cake. Today, I'm gonna to show you that recipe. I'm gonna show you the steps that you need so that you have yourself the best opportunity to get your videos ranked, your videos seen, and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to be able to do that right now. This is where everything starts. This is the Google, the YouTube search bar. What I want you to do is go put in there the word chocolate cake. There it is, chocolate cake. When that comes out, I am now thinking, hey, I've got a channel. Do I want to make a video about this keyword, about this thing called chocolate cake? What I'm going to do is I put my keywords in here in the search. By the way, of course, this will work for absolutely 
any keyword whatsoever. But we're going to stick with a chocolate cake simply because it's universal. Whether you're from Pakistan, from India, whether the Philippines, the, the Far East, the Middle East, the US, anywhere in the world, you are going to know what a chocolate cake is, which is why I stick with this as the example. So chocolate cake is in here. The first thing I do is I go look down here. Look at this bar. It says VidIQ search volume, and that's nice and green. What does that mean? It means a lot and a lot of people are searching for this. A lot of people are searching for your keyword. And then, so do you just rush out and make the video? No, because you've got to look at this metrics as well. It says competition score. It's in the red. What does that mean? It means, yes, we have a lot of people searching for chocolate cake, but we also have a lot of competition delivering on this term chocolate cake. So what, are, what, what do I do now? I mean, I really want to make a chocolate cake video, but look at that competition. I'm never going to rank against these videos. I mean, some of these things have got 45 million views. I, I'm never going to rank against them. So ideally, what you want is a term that is in the green. In other words, lots of people are searching and competition score is down here somewhere. That, when that happens, that is a beautiful match. You have got yourself a keyword that's highly searched for, but people are not delivering content. So this is where essentially you start. But let's stick with our, with our example here. We can see competition is very high, search volume is very high. What do I do now? What you do now is something is gonna change the way you do YouTube. Remember, YouTube is the world second largest search engine. What do you do in a search engine? You ask questions. And what YouTube's job is, is to marry up your question with somebody's video. Okay, again, YouTube is a search engine. It wants to give you answers to the question that you've asked. So here is a good hack. What you're gonna do, you're gonna go to chocolate cake in your search bar, you're gonna put space, and you're gonna do the alphabet walkthrough. A, chocolate cake at home. B, chocolate cake banana. C, D, E, F, G. Right, what am I doing? I am using YouTube's own autocomplete because YouTuber says, okay, so many people have around the world have searched for chocolate cake in. So the next person that starts to type the letter I, I'm going to make it easy for them to find their video immediately. So chocolate cake in a microwave seems to be pretty darn popular. So popular that all of a sudden it comes up in my autocomplete. If I was making a chocolate cake video, what I would do is I would say, chocolate cake in a mug or oh, in a microwave oh and then in a mug i would definitely not stick a chocolate cake in a pressure cooker but that could be a fun video too so chocolate cake in a microwave chocolate cake in a mug look how i'm already tapping into those search phrases that people are already searching for so that i know that people are searching for it to the point that it come up in here it came up in search therefore Enough people are searching that I potentially have some eyeballs that are going to come to my video. But there is even more. You go to the beginning. Remember, YouTube is a search engine. What do you do with a search engine? You ask questions. Go to the beginning. What? What's the chocolate cake? What is the ingredients of chocolate cake? Where? Where's my chocolate cake? Why chocolate cake cracks? I always love it when this one comes up. Why chocolate cake cracks? If you have a cooking channel, if you, or even if you have a kid's channel, why chocolate cake cracks and how to fix it? Think of that title. Right now, this has just told you exactly what YouTube wants. It told you what people are searching for. So go in there, what, where, when, how, why. Now let's go to this video. Let's go check out who our competition is. Remember, we're still in research mode. Most people will say, a good video is a video that has millions and millions of views. That's a fairly kind of okay statement to make. You know, we kind of judge whether a video is good or bad based by the amount of views that it has. That's fair enough. Here is the problem. The problem with the number of views is that it doesn't tell you time. It doesn't give you how long it took to get to those number of views. They got to 7 million views on this video. Did it take a day, a month, a year, five years? I have no idea. So if I just looked at this, at the total number of views, and made my entire decision, do I make my next big hit based on, oh, they got 7 million views, I'm going to make a chocolate cake video, so I can get some of those millions of views. 
Well, you could be flawed. I'll tell you why. Because when the iPhone 1 came out, I don't know, or the Samsung Galaxy Note 1 came out. I'm a geek techie guy, so that's going to happen. Um, when those phones came out like years ago, those videos have got millions and millions of views. But what are the odds of those videos getting millions of views today? That is what's important. Is, what, is it still relevant today? That is critical. So instead of just looking at the total number of views, what we do is we expose something called views per hour, VPH. And wow, is this critical? Because views per hour tells me right now people are watching this video today. As we sit here, people are watching this video. And if they're watching this video, it means it's still relevant right now. So forget the number of views. I'm much more interested in the views per hour. And click on historical. Watch this. Over time, did this term get stronger or weaker? Remember, I'm just using chocolate cake. You can use absolutely anything that is specific to you and your channel. But look at this. Over time, look how much that has increased. The interest in chocolate cake has gone up. This is a great indicator together with the views per hour. That tells me if you're going to make a video, this is a good topic. If this had one view per hour, who cares how many views this has got in total? Nobody cares today about this topic. As we go down the scorecard here, you're going to see a whole bunch. Do they use any Reddit um, strategies, a little bit of Facebook? But look at this. To me, this is gold. This is uh, just the best tool in the world. I know we created it. I am a little bit biased, but I absolutely love this tool. This is the compare views in the first 28 days tool. Essentially what this does, it says, look, you're in research mode. You want to know, is this a regular video for this channel? Yes, they got 15 million subscribers. Is this just one of those uh, regular video that they just turned out? Or does this video perform exceptionally well? In other words, it's an outlier video. It's so well, it went way above the channel. And this is what this, this does for you. It says, look at this video compared to this channel's average. Now, this channel's average is here. It's the pink. This video is the blue. Instantly, you can see this is an amazing video. Now you want to study it. Now you want to say after the first day, how many views did it get compared to the channel average? On the seventh day, how many views did it get compared to the channel? So for example, this channel's average is between 140 and 230,000 views after seven days. This video got 854,000 views. In other words, this is an outlier video. This video performs remarkably well. How awesome is this tool? You can go to any video and go and watch this, that video compared to that channel's average. But it gets even better because you can go in here and you can compare it to your channel's average, to the last video you watched on YouTube, to any video on YouTube, any playlist, any channel, and your competitor's average. And I'll show you competitors as well. So this is super duper powerful. You go to any video when you're doing your research. Remember, haven't picked up the camera yet. I want to be the first D. I want to be discovered. So I'm going to do all my legwork right now to understand what works in this world and what doesn't. Now that I know that this is a great video, what's next? What's the next step? Well, the next step is you're going to go into one of the tools and it's something called competitors. Now I'm going to click on competitors and what competitor does is these are my competitors. This is vidIQ's competitors. And competitor is a bit of a strong term. Essentially, what this is, it's other people who are doing similar content than we are. It's people we want to keep our eye on, people that we work with, people that we love, people that we hang out with at events with. But what I want to see, so why would I want to see what they're up to? Well, I want to see what they're up to because I want to understand what's their thumbnail strategy. Are they still using short, term, short titles or long titles? What is their views per hour? Remember? views per hour. I don't care how many views um, these these videos got, but I care about this. I know if this many people are interested in this topic, I need to explore that further. So you do the same on your channel. You go find your competitors, 10, 15 competitors, big con channels, little channels. Go keep an eye on what they're up to. See if anything you can learn from. What's their thumbnail like? Look, people have gone dark now. 
um, Cody has gone dark, Brian Johnson has gone dark, you know, faces are still a thing. I'm learning all the time. I'm learning what my competitors are doing so I can keep ahead. Remember, YouTube is about trends. YouTube knows we don't watch one video and then leave and then go and make a buying decision. We watch multiple videos about the same topic. We all do. If you're gonna buy a new device, a new gadget, you're gonna watch reviews. You're gonna watch three, four, five reviews before you make a decision. This is what YouTube does. It knows that we will watch multiple videos about the same topic. So YouTube suggests videos for you to watch. So making sure that you are always getting content that you're looking for. So if I know that these guys are starting to talk about certain topics that I talk about, well, maybe YouTube will suggest my video to the same audience because I'm talking about similar topics. How cool is that? Go load up 10, 15 competitors, keep your eye on their thumbnails, their titles, their views per hour, understand what's trending so that you guys can actually make content similar to within your industry and then get those views when YouTube starts suggesting those videos. Because trends is where it's at. And because trend is where it's at, we've got something called trend alerts. And when you go and you create a trend alert, here's what happens. Typically, a lot of us understand trends once they have become trends. We understand things that have already popped. Um, some things like Baby Shark is a very, very bad example. Um, Fortnite, I mean, any of those things that were really kind of popped, the challenges, things of that nature. But a lot of us will only see it once there's been so much hoo-ha about this online, so much noise that we kind of riding the very tail end of those trends. Watch this. Give it a give it a give it a name. Let's just use Fortnite as a bad example. Well, if you're a gaming channel, you'll put Fortnite. Maybe you'll put PUBG. If you're a car channel, maybe you're gonna put the brand names of these cars into these trend alerts because this is what it does. You can use little keywords or big keywords. So Fortnite is obviously a big keyword. I'm basically telling VidIQ, look VidIQ, I'm really interested in this term Fortnite. If anybody makes a video that gets more than a thousand views per hour, not in total, a thousand views per hour, let me know and I'll get a report that looks like this and I can get it every day, every two days, each week, each month. So in other words, I can already keep an eye on what's popping in my industry because when I see a video, or whatever it may be, when I see a video going from 100 views per hour, next time I see the same video, it's at 500 views per hour, and then it's at 1,000 views per hour, wow, something is happening. I need to go and investigate. I need to understand why that video is moving so quickly. Why is it going from 100 to 500 to 1,000? and I need to understand it quickly, so perhaps I go and make a video around the same topic. And you can create multiple alerts. So you can have Fortnite, create another alert, PUBG, another alert, Call of Duty, or whatever it may be. And in your industry, you know the keywords that you're constantly searching for when you're keeping your eye on your competitors. Those are the keywords that you stick into. The next thing is most viewed. Now, most viewed can become weird. This is everything that's viewed on YouTube at the moment. Now, before you tell me, yes, there is the trending page, I'm fully aware of it, but what this is, it's everything that's rocking on YouTube right now, sorted by views per hour. Now, how powerful is that? Essentially, this video is getting 704,000 views per hour. The PewDiePie, 249,000 views per hour. David Dobrik, 130,000 views per hour. Why do we care, realistically? Well, firstly, you're in a YouTube game. You need to know what's happening on YouTube as the bigger picture. You need to know what these channels are up to, what's attracting audiences. You need to keep your eye on that. But now you're gonna say to me, Apple TV has got however many, um, 52,000 subs, but it's Apple. You've got David Dobrik who's got 13 million um, subscribers. Well, how do I even play in this game? Good question. What you do, you go all the way to the bottom here, and you say, you know what? Only show me channels between 100,000 and a million subscribers. Now, this changes the game. Now it's getting much closer to perhaps your world. You can make it anything that's getting um, 1,000 to 10,000 subscribers, whatever is closest to your world. And then you can start searching even more by categories, by countries, even do some search terms. If I had a kid's channel, I would just live on here because here it's exposed to me immediately, the thumbnails that these people are using. It exposes to me the title. This person has hit every keyword. It's got a great thumbnail. Slime is a big term, 
ASMR is a big term. Relaxing slime is a big term. They clearly know what they're doing. They've used all the right stuff. And look at this. It's just rocking at 30,000 views per hour. Okay. Very, very, very powerful. Guys, you get all these tools if you're using the free vidIQ. Um, but because you're on this webinar, you can go down into the link and get the full 30 days. I'm going to unlock all this for you. So in 30 days, you can see the power that you can immediately generate on your channel. Remember, this is only, we still haven't done, we still haven't finished. This is still the first D. This is just being discovered. Look how much kind of research you need to do because why waste your time on something that's not going to work? Once you've done that research, you're going to come back into this page because you've now shot your video. You're now ready to roll. You now got your title because you know what your title is because you've done that research. And as you go through here, you're going to say, okay, this is a video that Rob did. How to delete YouTube videos 2019. New method. What's key here? Well, what's key here is the title. The title is key. This is what YouTube looks at the most. Then description and then tags. Now together, they all make up the metadata that a YouTube needs, that the search engine needs in order to go ahead and understand what's in your video. Yes, YouTube watches your video. Yes, they watch your thumbnail. But when you put them all together, you're just feeding the beast. You're saying, hey, I'm going to tell you what my video is about. So you can see here how to delete YouTube videos 2019 is repeated in the first line of the description. How to delete the vid YouTube videos in 2019. I'm telling YouTube twice. Oh, guess what? I'm also telling YouTube down here in the tags again what this video is about. Now there's no misunderstanding. And look how beautifully this is ranking for it. The, one, the numbers in blue is what it's ranking for. This is just an absolute superb video. Let me show you how you do this. As you start typing, it's going to give you the term. It's going to give you a whole bunch of, um, a bunch of scores so you know which tags have got more value than other tags. Now, watch this. Check this out. This is, gonna, this is like my favorite part here. Mother's Day, okay? These are all the related keywords for Mother's Day. But watch this, okay? What's the interest over time? Well, it's pretty much wavering. Can you see that? But it's coming down. Mother's Day is done. So what is working is things around Mother's Day. Mother's Day songs, Mother's Day, a happy Mother's Day, Mother's Day's card. Now, if you didn't make a Mother's Day video this year, should you just give up on this term? Watch this. You click on all time. And now what this does, it evaluates the term Mother's Day in this particular case over a period of time. So since 2008, look at this. Every single year, there is a spike. What does this mean? It means that when you didn't make a video this year for Mother's Day, should you be making a video for Mother's Day next, um, next year? Absolutely. You know it's going to hit. The likelihood of it, it popping around Mother's Day next year is huge because every single year it is hit. So why would this year, next year be any different? And the cool thing about this is that a date you can just use again and again and again. So you can say, how to make your mother Mother's Day best, the ultimate Mother's Day chocolate cake um, how-to video, 2019. Next year, delete 2019, label it as 2020. The same information applies. So always check the term, check it against 30 days, check it against all time. And that's going to give you a lot of valuable information, what's relevant today, versus what's relevant once a year, or maybe multiple times a year. These are tent pole events, things like Christmas, New Year's, um, Independence Day, or you, you know the big ones. Also, don't forget, if you don't live in the US, what is your local country's um, big big events, big tent pole events? South Africa, we had National Bri Day, which is barbecue day. Now that I know what my tags are, I've got a cool description. And by the way, description is important. Don't just give it one line, give it a lot of information, Feed the beast. Tell YouTube what your videos are about. Scroll further down. I get a checklist. Hey, did I add it to a card? Have I added it to an end screen? Have I got closed caption? We don't monetize our channel, so that's fine to have the X. Playlist, public, did we share it? Whoop, may not need to share this video. Right, Facebook, etc. This just keeps a good checklist to help you get more exposure. Down here, more keywords, and down here is videos to gain views from. What does that mean? 
Well, remember, YouTube wants to pair videos together. It wants to know that people are going to watch a how to delete a YouTube video. Well, perhaps there's other videos here that are already speaking about the same topic. And maybe I can use some of these keywords to try link them to my video so I can get those eyeballs. When somebody watches that video, maybe YouTube will recommend my video next. But watch this. Best time to publish. This is so critical. Remember I was speaking about VPH, views per hour, right? When you launch a video, YouTube doesn't know if it's a good or a bad video yet. It has no idea. But when you launch it and your audience comes immediately and they watch and you're keeping them hooked and you're keeping them on the, on the video for long and they're watching your next video, those are insanely beautiful signals to YouTube that YouTube says, wow, this is quality, quality video. And that's when you begin unlocking that third, that's, <laughs> that second D. YouTube says, okay, are you delivering? So how do you get the most eyeballs on your video as you launch? Well, you simply use the best time to publish on your channel tool. Go through the days of the week, whichever day you happen to be on. If we launched a video, I don't know, on a Tuesday, between 9 and 11 seems to be our best time. I would probably launch it a little bit before here so I can get the up run as people are logging on. And remember, try not to launch videos on the hour like 10, 11, 12, or on the half hour, 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30. The reason for it is because a lot of the big corporates, a lot of people that schedule videos way ahead of time, they typically launch um, at those time periods. So I kind of launch my video at 9.46 or 10.32. You know, something weird where you're going to be the notification that people watch because you didn't receive like 30 notifications on your phone at once. So just a bit of a ninja tactic there. What's next is the th second D. Did you deliver? Well, this is when the channel audit tool comes into play. Now, this, <laughs> again, um, this is what I was missing when I was trying to work out this YouTube game myself before I joined VidIQ. This is so important because I have no idea. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 30 hours of my life trying to understand YouTube analytics. Just push a button and tell me what's working and what isn't working. This is what the channel audit does. So over the last 30 days, how many views did you get on your channel compared to the previous month? Are you growing or are you shrinking? If you're growing, do you know why? If you're shrinking, do you know why? And look at this, content to double down on. Essentially, double down is a term that means make more of these. You think double down, go big, because people are loving this content. Why? Look, these videos are giving, me, are giving me views per hour. These videos are giving me the engagement rates, giving me views, giving me subscribers. How many subscribers did these videos give me? How many subscribers per 1,000 views? So I know what's working. I know what my audience wants. Same on your channel. You look at your audience, and maybe your audience is telling you what they want, and you're just not seeing it. But this will show that to you. And scroll further down. Total watch time. Total average watch time top retention. What are these? These are the stuff that YouTube is looking for. Which videos are giving are keeping people watching? What is the watch time, the average watch time and the retention? So people are loving these content. Guess what I'm going to do? Make more of these style videos. I can immediately see, look at when we have a comparison tool between uh, these, these data graphs, I can already see that that's popping. It sh instantly I can see that. Therefore, I'm going to make more of these. Okay, can you see how powerful this is? It's the stuff to make more of. As you scroll further down, it even tells you, look, these are the top search terms. This is what people search to get to, get to your videos. How to download a YouTube video, look how cool that is, 30,000. Look at these TCs versus PewDiePie, great. Your audience still wants that. Do we make more content around this? Absolutely. End screen click, um, click rates. What are people clicking on the end screen the most? Well, for us, it's videos. Perfect. And best for viewer. Great. Guess what I'm going to stick on my end screen? Less playlist, more the stuff. Look at the card click rates. Polls, 57%. People love engaging in our polls. Guess what I'm going to be doing? Making more polls. It tells you this. This is the stuff that's working. And just as importantly, the stuff that isn't working. Guys, this is the content that could use work on our channel. You guys didn't really dig this content. Lowest average watch time, lowest retention, um, lowest like radio, <laughs> ratio. 
People love Jack Black, and apparently Rob managed to upset quite a lot of people by doing this video. Okay, note to self, don't mess with Jack. Cool, now we know. Lowest view, look, these videos are losing our subscribers. Well, what do we do? We're gonna investigate these things and work out, hold on, um, are these things badly done? Bad time of year, do we have to redo them? Maybe our thumbnails wasn't up to scratch. All of those things, I'm asking ourselves the question again and again, so the videos appear in this section, in the stuff to do more of. Um, remember, if you have a, let's just say, back to our cooking channel, if you love your chocolate cake recipes, but guess what? Every time you do that, they're in the content that could use work section, but every time you do something about a barbecue, it's always in the top section, guess what your audience wants from you? More barbecue recipes, less chocolate cake recipes. See how powerful this is, it exposes that information are you delivering that's that second d we've been discovered now are you delivering and again as you scroll further down average metrics over the last 30 days what was your title length description length etc and then items to improve upon look here we got six videos instantly it's in red which don't have an end screen i need to go fix that do, do all your videos have cards do they all have custom thumbnails were they all added to your playlist were, how many are you posting each week important information i go straight to the red and I go and I make those changes. If I had a YouTube channel, which I do, I live in this. This tells me if I'm delivering, because if I'm not delivering, I have a problem. If I am delivering, it all that means, it means my audience is loving what I'm doing, and then YouTube is going to unlock that third D, which is distribution. And when we're talking about distribution, we're talking about YouTube says, look, these are great signs. People are loving your content. If they're loving your content, I'm going to show it to a different audience. I'm going to test your videos with an audience who's never heard of you, an audience who's maybe searched for you but never landed on your video. I'm going to show them your video. What's going to happen here? You're going to get to a point where your videos start getting out further and further, and you're going to unlock these achievements. And when you unlock these achievements, we create this lovely certificate for you. And let me tell you why this is a growth strategy. When you see a certificate like this, congratulations, vidIQ, you've cracked 350,000 subscribers on this date. What do we do? We share it. We share it on social media, and people love to see that they were part of that journey, and they love to be part of a journey. So they give you a thumbs up. Hey, I'm one of those 350. Hey, I was with you from the start. And they retweet it. Guess what happens? Other people see those retweets. They see what's going on with this channel. What is this channel? Click, and it gives you an opportunity to get more subscribers. So as soon as you hit those milestones, go ahead and share that certificate. Tag vidIQ when you do that, at vidIQ, and we will help spread your word, spread your channel even further. It is a beautiful, beautiful growth strategy. And remember, this obviously gets adjusted for your channel. We know you're not going to hit your first key achievement when you get 350,000, of course. Each channel, this is customized for you so that you can share your success as soon as you hit it. Lots of cool metrics here, lots of cool information. Like, if, for example, how far are you? We're on pace for 400,000 subscribers by this date. Uh, we use this as a challenge. Are we really going to wait? No. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to start going harder and harder and try getting to those subscribers. Alrighty, so that was a lot coming at you fast and fast and furious. So I hope you got lots of value out of that. If you didn't, go back and watch it again. The reason that part is pre-recorded is because so many people go and watch this days or weeks after this actually airs, and they want to do a step by step by step. They don't want me interrupting the conversation, saying hello to all these people, awesome people in the chat. Um, I just saw George X, um, X, Ashley B is here. So they don't want that interruption once they're trying to go ahead and start to study, you know, how to use the A to Z of getting your videos ranked. So that's why we pre-record that section. And now it's Q&A time. Now it's where you guys ask me a whole bunch of questions. I'm happy to help wherever I can. Uh, a couple of things I already saw that like a theme that keeps on going again and again through these presentations is more of, is my niche too saturated? How do I stand out, right? There's a lot of people that um, have been asking that specific question. So let me start by addressing that first, and then we're gonna get to your question as well. If you have a question, start with hashtag question 
and then type your question in here so I can actually pick you up. But hold on, let me answer this one first. So um, how do you stand out? Why is your channel different? That is the number one thing that you bring. You know the famous saying, be yourself, everybody else is already taken, all right? We don't want Me Too channels. We don't want another PewDiePie channel. We don't want another Casey Neistat channel. We don't want another Peter McKinnon channel because all you're going to be doing is you're gonna be copying somebody else's. You're gonna be copying what they're doing. And therefore, it's not you. Nobody cares. It's we want to connect with you. Maybe you live in a specific region. Maybe your internet's dodgy. Maybe you don't. Um, you can only upload from your phone. Maybe you, you do something that is unique to your area. Maybe you're a farmer. Maybe you look after lawns. The, uh, these amazing channels out there because people bring themselves. So do not be somebody else. Stand out by being yourself. Be awesome. Be epic. Whatever you bring to the table, bring yourself. And you'll see people connect with people. We connect with awesome people. We connect with people that we want to be like. We connect with people that we want to hang out with. Be that channel. If you're going to be that channel, people are naturally going to subscribe and they're going to come watch your videos again and again. There isn't such a thing as too saturated. I'm in the technology world. How many millions and millions of channels out there in the tech world with millions of subscribers? My channel's still growing. I went from 8,000 subscribers to 75,000 subscribers, okay? So there's still space for everybody to play. You've got to bring yourself into this. Okay, let's get into some other questions that I saw here. Um, okay, Lily Craft Nooks hit, starts us off with, I have a series or uh, a series point one to four, huh? Oh, part one to four. How do I put them in a playlist in order? I want to uh, put them in the end screen. Yeah, yeah, great question. Okay, if you're doing a part series, one, you got to watch episode one, episode two, three, and four create a playlist, make it an official playlist, and then you, you drive traffic to your first video in that playlist. In your end screen, go and refer people to the previous episodes, or start the next episode with either summary of the previous episode, or point them to that episode with cards. So you know you've seen on TV where people do things like, um, on last week's episode, Joe went to the market and got herself some potatoes, and now we're gonna pick it up from there do that kind of little summary as well. That's also cool. But drive people around your episode and get them to watch your previous one, two, three, and four. Also with your thumbnail, label it. Episode one or four, two or four, three or four, four or four. We naturally gonna look for episode one because we wanna start at the beginning. Nobody starts watching a Netflix series on season two, episode 12, right? You're gonna watch episode one and then work your way up with it. So really, really cool question. Um, Animatical production question is an animation channel uh, as an animation. Oh, Nama squad subscribe. I thought he left us because he was not happy that the Q and A wasn't coming. Oh, well, um, question is an animation channel. I can't upload that often. How do I still keep bringing in audiences if I can upload often? That's fine. A, a channel like dude perfect, for example, uploads once a month. I understand animation is so much more difficult. The work is ridiculous. I respect completely what you guys do. That's okay. Your fans will wait. If your next episode is good and you and people are, will, will wait a week, two weeks, a month even for that next episode, don't fall into that whole thing of, I have to upload three times a week. That is nonsense. Um, YouTube wants quality over quantity. It wants videos people want to watch. It wants videos that people watch um, to 100% to 50% retention, you've retained the audience. That is the quality of video people want. I'd rather you upload once a week, once every two weeks, and as a really good episode, versus uploading six times a week and all of them get one or 2% retention because it's just rushed and it just doesn't feel cool. So absolutely focus on your work, bring the best that you can out there. Don't worry about the schedule of being able to do multiple a week. Do what's comfortable for you. That's the golden nugget here. Always bring quality, 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 quality. That's how you win on YouTube. Okay, question. Lagging production. Dude, you're gonna have to tell us how to say your name because we obviously messing it up. If I can upload weekly, but sometimes my videos are done in a day, how can I schedule my videos so that to benefit the most? Well, great question. So if you, you've shot your videos, you've edited them, they're ready to go, look in the analytic tools, look in the vidIQ section. It will tell you on which day, when is the best traffic, when are people online, when are they likely to be um, on YouTube and therefore watching your video? Use that data. Go back into your YouTube analytics. Look at your geography. Look at your cities. Look at which time of day is the best for them to obviously be online. So you wouldn't, if you're launching something for a kid's channel, 
Launching it at 7 in the morning before school is probably a bad idea. But on a Friday afternoon, it's probably a better idea, right? So that is how you understand what works and what doesn't work for your channel. Always experiment. Always break it down and see what works and kind of adjust accordingly. Kind of bob and weave. It's lag -ging, As in like lagging. Like I have a lag on my Fortnite. Lagging? All right, cool. Now we know. Now we all know, people. Now we know. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? Eagle Dude, question. Do hashtags in the title or descriptions do anything? Awesome questions. So, hashtags. Um, ra <laughs> Rob Wilson pronounces it correctly. Well, that's Rob Wilson. He's a legend. So, um, hashtag. We use hashtags a lot in order to link videos to each other. So, we use um, hashtags to how to grow your YouTube channel. And then we use that as a hashtag on all the videos talking about how to grow your, your YouTube channel. The idea with this is that somebody could click on a hashtag and then I'm going to list all the videos. The danger with this is that if you do something generic like technology or Samsung or chocolate cake, then it's going to list everybody else that does chocolate cake. So people are going to leave your channel. So I always like to mix it up. I like to have kind of generic stuff, but I also like to have more things which are specifically to my channel. So on my personal channel, I'll have hashtag the techie guy. And then all my videos are labeled with that. So if you click on it, you basically see my videos. You try it for yourself, see what works and what doesn't. YouTube doesn't give you any more or less preference if you have it or you don't. It's more about the user being able to click on something and getting other videos in that genre. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, question, um, um, wipe fire. When PewDiePie will, um, will be back, what, what changed on his channel? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd love to find out if PewDiePie is coming back and what he's doing. We all love PewDiePie and he's disappeared for us. So that's a problem. Okay, the Hubbard, the Hubbard Hub. Question, what is the code? Oh, okay, for the 30-day um, trial, it's in the link in the description. If you can't see it accurately, it's webinar. Just all capitals, webinar, W-E-B-N-I-A-R, webinar, I think. Okay, um, all right. No small creators. Apple O, no small creators. Yeah, that's Cody Wayne's thing. Love Cody. It's awesome. All right. Any other questions I can answer you before I head out? Is there anything else that I can do? Uh, PewDiePie's on the die. Uh, whatever. I mean, everyone's got their opinions to this. You're obviously entitled to yours. Uh, this is just not something we want to get into here. Um, oh, okay, one. So the other question that I saw was about thumbnails and titles. So this is pretty important as well. So I wanted to make sure that you guys cover that. Remember, don't look at your titles in isolation and then your um, thumbnail in isolation. You've got to look together as a pair. Who knows what the purpose of a thumbnail is? Does anybody know what the purpose of a thumbnail is? Let's see. Um, let's see if people know out, out here. Now, I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. Um, right. I saw a couple of questions coming in. Anna Zilli, how do you use multiple playlists? Uh, basically, you, you set up multiple playlists and then something can be a member of two playlists and you simply move them around between that. So the whole purpose of a thumbnail is only one thing. The purpose of a thumbnail is to get somebody to stop what they're doing. If they're scrolling down on their phones, which is most likely how they're getting your content, you want their, um, to attract attention. That's right, exactly, you got it. And this is from Alcibes Gaming, good. You to attract attention, get them to click. Lily Craft Nook, absolutely. Paul Peck Drywall, 100%, get them to click. To draw attention, Ethan Rick, 100%. It's not about CTI. It's about getting them to stop. Stop and getting them to go, wow, what's that? What's going to get them to actually click is your title. But they've got to work together. So many people make the mistake of having an amazing title, an amazing thumbnail, put them together. It doesn't really work. You've got to make them work together. Also, don't give everything away in your thumbnail. So many people do this. They hold up whatever. This is the best light you'll ever buy for your camera. Well, great. What's the point of watching the video now, right? Give them a Is this the best light? Uh, five reasons why I love this and one that's not so good. You know, things like that. Get somebody to want to click on that video. Don't give everything away right at the beginning. Okay. Um, I saw a whole bunch of questions coming in as I was doing that. So whenever I threaten to leave, I get a bunch of questions. <laughs> Ethan Rex says, what is the main difference between Pro Plan and the Boost Plan? Go look on the website, um, vidiq.com slash plans, I think it is. It will just list out the, var the various differences. I would start with the free. Once you use the free for a bit, I would upgrade to the webinar code. Gives you 30 days for free. 
that gives you the top end thing. And then you can see how much you're actually using it, how much value you're getting out of it. Go watch this again. And then with having your tools ready and you'll see what it actually will do to your channel. Definitely go do that. Um, okay, question. Um, I saw a bunch of questions coming in, coming in. I'm just gonna look for them because they're a little bit further up now. Um, okay, PB props. My output, building models, etc., cost a lot of money for materials. I'm always out of pocket. I'm loath to e-bag, but my channel monetization doesn't help at all. Yes, any ideas? Awesome. How big is your channel, first of all? Do you have a community of people? Have you tried things like a live stream and maybe do get some super chat money to come in? Have you tried Patreon? Get a, um, offer extra value to people who are part of your community who want to support you. Believe it or not, your audience wants to help you. They want to see you succeed. So if somebody can throw in a couple of dollars a month just so that, you know, you buy coffee. Oh, in fact, there's actually a service called buymecoffee.com, I think it is, something like that, where somebody can just donate a couple of bucks in, they throw that into the kitty, and then it allows you to buy coffee. So yes, because material costs, events costs, travel costs, equipment costs, I fully understand. In order to monetize, talk to your community. Robert 3 n just subscribe. Boom. Welcome to, now hopefully I said that's sort of right-ish. Okay, so use your community. They want to help you. Let them help you. Do a live chat with Super, um, with super Chat. See, see what that comes out as. And also don't forget, you can actually talk to brands. It doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are. That you have an audience that somebody wants to tap into. If you're into the building model industry, great. How many companies out there are selling um, kits for people to build? How many companies are selling equipment and you know all the tools that you need? Reach out to them. Do a deal with them. Say, hey, I've got however many people that tune to me on a regular basis, blah, blah, blah. Let's work together. You don't, Maybe they'll donate you the equipment, in which case you don't have to spend money on them. Again, I'm, I go into this very deeply on something called Tube Talk, which is my podcast, where we teach you how to monetize your channel with brands. Go and talk to your brands. People are making a mistake that you need to have hundreds and thousands of um, subscribers to do these deals. That is so not true. I did my first deal way under a thousand subscribers with Samsung. So you need to know it is absolutely possible. So go check it out. Hopefully that answered, uh, hopefully that answered your question. Um, right, G4 government, J, J jobs, blah, blah, blah. How to get views in new YouTube channel. Watch this from the beginning because we've answered it a couple of times. Uh, lagging production. Um, how do I customize my thumbnail so that it attracts more audience? Um, by the way, I have another question coming up. Okay, so your first question, how do you um, make the most effective thumbnail? That's difficult. I'm not a graphic designer. Absolutely hate that part, but I've got to focus and I'm learning slowly how to use Photoshop, how to use tools to try to get them better and better and better. I can tell you that I would use my competitor tools in the vidIQ. I would look at all my other competitors, see what they're doing, and I would do something different. I want to stand out. If you look at my channel, my um, thumbnails are greens and pinks and blues because all my competitors are doing these head videos on kind of neutral colors. I want to pop. I want to stand out. So that's how is one way of doing it. You don't have to have so much text in your thumbnail either. I don't know when that trend started, but I really wish it would stop. Your thumbnail is about this big, and especially on a cell phone, it's tiny. You're taking up so much space by giving so much text. Why? Use your thumbnail to get somebody to stop. Your text is where your thumbnail, your, your title wins all the time. Um, right, Lily Craftsman says, me too. <laughs> all right, question. Let's go back to the top, see if I can find anything else on here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, Ethan Rick, question. Hi, um, Duke, does collaboration with other channel ben benefit your channel? Absolutely. Um, you know, think about your audience. Think about who you're delivering your message to. What kind of content do they want? Are there other channels out there that are doing similar stuff to you? Could you do a, do you have a relationship with them? Could you build a relationship with them? The important thing is we've got to stop the mindset of it's me versus you. You know, you might, I'm in the tech world, you might be in the tech world, so I'm not going to talk to you because you'll steal away my audience. It doesn't happen. In fact, we both win. If I do a video collaborating with you and you have you on my channel, you do a video with me on your channel, both of our channel gets a lift as long as it's the right thing. Don't just collaborate with everybody for the sake of being on their channel because their audience are not going to love your content. You need to find like-minded people, if that makes that makes sense. Um, okay, so what else have we got going here? Um, da -da -da -da. Um, Malik says, um, why do watch time hours decreases? 
Well, the whole thing of YouTube is they want quality video. So here's what happened. You've done everything that you needed to do. You've uploaded your videos. You've done your research because you've been through this with me the whole day today and you know how to do this now, right? Great. YouTube knows when you upload your videos. It knows what your thumbnail is about. It knows what your title is about, your description, your tags. It also knows what's inside your video, believe it or not. The YouTube AI algorithm is so smart, it knows what's inside your video. It automatically captions your video. It's got the data it needs. What doesn't it know? It doesn't know if it's a good or a bad video. It doesn't know that yet because there's no way for you to tell. How does it tell if it's a good or a bad video? When you hit this, the publish button and it's unlisted and now it's public, do people watch? How quickly do they watch? Do they watch for a long time or a short time? Do they share it? Do they leave a comment? Do they give it a thumbs up? Those are signals YouTube is looking for to know if it's a good quality video or not. So when you upload and you want to be able to get that attention, you want to make sure that you're retaining your audience. So many people are making 10 minute video because they want to throw in as many ads as possible, but they've lost their audience. Their audience isn't coming along for the ride. I would make a four minute video, get that audience to 50% every time. Can you do that? Great. Make a five minute video, six minute video. Can you still get them to 50%? Great. Make it and slowly, slowly you expand. As Soon as you see you're not returning audience to 50%, take it down a notch. Gamer, not gamer, just hit that subscribe button. So we gotta go thumbs up for that. Thank you for doing that. Um, does that make sense? You need to be able to retain your audience. That is what YouTube wants. Um, Zane Khan, two, four, six, eight, just hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Welcome to the stream. Um, does that make sense, right? So you want to retain that audience. Um, Alexander Kislow, is this over? Well, it's over if you're done. If you don't have any question, of course, you feel free to leave or you can hang out and listen to other questions because it actually will help your channel. Um, st stinks Vibes. Did I say that right? Um, great stream. I appreciate you being here and awesome comments earlier as well. Really appreciate you being here. Um, I just got here. Oh, okay, cool. So Alexander, this will be available on the replay. As soon as we're done, it will process and you can go back and watch it. Now it's some Q&A time in case you've got any questions for your channel. Absolutely happen to take it. Um, right. How many questions, um, how many comments should I have per video? As many as possible. The more comments, the more engagement you get. That is what good, these are good signals for your community and good signals for YouTube. So here's another little, um, another little, little tip is that when you are um, having comments, when you have comments on your video, you know, somebody says, hey, cool video. I always reply with, awesome, thanks for being here. Which was your favorite part? Because that gives them a prompt to come back and reply to me as opposed to thanks, because they've just entered the conversation. So go ahead and engage with your community. Like Fallen Beast is just engaging with us by hitting that subscribe button. So thank you for doing that. That's awesome, that's right. So does that make sense? Don't end conversations on, on YouTube. I've seen so many people do that. Somebody says, hey, awesome video, and you go, thanks. Now it's radio silence, right? Ask more questions, follow up with that. That's how you get kind of things being, uh, to coming back and forth. So, um, right, who have we got here? Kyle Atkinson, great tip, awesome, glad you're here. This is why we do this stuff. We're doing this for you, to help you, um, to help you rank up. Gamer, not gamer, should I, oh, where did you disappear? Should I cut sound bites out longer, for, of longer video for my gaming channel. You have to look at your retention. Look at something called relative retention because that's gonna tell you where people have left your video compared to other videos on your channel, um, or of similar length, sorry, on YouTube. If you're making a short video and people are, die, are leaving, uh, let's, let's, let's talk retention for a second because that's important. You have a video. Let's just say the video is four minutes. You look at the graph and you see a hockey stick shape, right? People start. And by the first 60, um, 30 seconds and 60 seconds, you've lost most of your audience. What does that mean? Your hook at the beginning isn't strong enough. You haven't kept that audience watching. Okay, you gotta work on the hook. You gotta tell them why they need to watch this video. Cut out animations, cut out all your logos spinning and all those cool sound effects you've been working on. Maybe people just don't like them. Make it shorter, get rid of it. Retain them for longer. If you've lost 80% of your audience in the first 60 seconds, how is this video gonna be successful? It cannot. So, now that you've worked on the beginning, where are you losing them in the middle? Maybe you rambled on and on and on and maybe you rambled on and maybe you rambled on and maybe you rambled on like I'm doing now. People are gonna get bored and they're going to leave. So, maybe you gotta cut out the middle section, the meat and bones of your video, just get to the point and then keep them engaged. And then at the end, 
do you say at the end, do you say, thanks guys for hanging out, it was awesome having you here. Well, in which case, people are going to leave because they see from your body language and from your words, you're pretty much done. Don't do that. Towards the end, as you know, you're about to, you're about to end, hit them up with, and if you like this video, do you got to check out this video here and point to something on the screen so something happens. Point to that video and say, hey, go and check out this video. That's the follow-up. Or um, here's one I made earlier. Those kind of things. Get them moving. The biggest mistakes we make, for us, it's over, right? We've shot the video. We've edited it. We're done. But for the viewer, they're still on a journey. Let them go to the next video. Let them go to the next video. I always tell my audience, hey, if you like this video on faster Wi-Fi, check out how to get your PS4 to be even faster. I'll see you in that video. And then I quickly go to that video, right? And I end there because I just told them where to go and I've told them I will see them on there and I carry on with them on that other side. Okay, so beginning, middle, and end. Analyze each one of those retention points. Simon Fe um, Felico, just subscribe. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for being here, part of IQ. So does that make sense? You've got to look at the beginning, middle, and end and keep people for as long as possible. If you're losing people at the beginning, no matter how awesome your video is, they're not going to see it. So keep them hooked and engaged. All right. That was a bit of a bit of a rant, but hopefully it makes sense. Um, question. Uh, made with glee. How do you deal with the one anonymous person who leaves a dislike on every video? Love him. I get this every single time. I hit a video and before, I mean, it goes live and it gets a negative. In fact, on the live stream, we schedule a live stream. It hasn't gone live yet and there's still, a, there's already a thumbs down. So what? Who cares? There was some guy in the chat here earlier. I don't know if you were here for that. He was just basically saying Q and A, Q and A, Q and A. And then he said this, uh, when I said to him, look, you kind of got to wait until the session, until the Q and A session. He like the, this whole thing of blah, 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 and that IQ this, and who cares? they're on their journey they've obviously got enough going on in their lives that they need to be a troll on the internet bye bye cheers i don't need that in my life have a good day ban and subscribe yeah that's it what do you care if some person out there hits a dislike button don't take it personally it's easy to do you just got to click on the mouse right there's 11 dislikes on this video <laughs> Boo -hoo. i don't care i care about helping you i care about helping people in the comments here and azili just subscribe we definitely care about that Okay, because these are awesome people. Most of the people are rad. Some people are just basically, you know, they live a very weird life and they like to troll everyone. So what? Get a, let, let them have their fun. The nice thing is, when they leave these crappy little comments, just hide them from the channel. They think you saw it and they think that all their replies, everybody else can see it. They cannot. Let them scream into the void. Who cares? Really, realistically, who cares? I feel so bad for these people that this is how they get their kicks. It's just, hmm. You want to live your life that way, whatever. Um, um, okay, right. Yank your chain. Cool name. <laughs> How hard is it not to do a niche channel? Very, 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 very hard. Difficult, hard, whatever. It, it, it is. It is what it is. You want to be pigeonholed. I love people who say they don't want to be pigeonholed. That basically means you don't want to be the best in the world at what you do. Why wouldn't you not want to be the best in the world at what you do? So think about this. Um, I'm a horrible mechanic. I know nothing about my car. Like, I mean, zero. I'm just pathetically bad at my car. But I know the best mechanic to call. So if I get stuck, I call the mechanic. I'm a terrible accountant. So I know the best accountant to call because they're a specialist in their field. If my accountant was also my mechanic and also my doctor and also my PUBG partner, I just that's just weird. I want a specialist. Justine TV, welcome to VidIQ. Awesome having you here. So you want to be a specialist. You want to be pigeonholed. You want to be the best in the world. Because if you're the best in the world, people come to you because they think of you as the channel to go to. You have to be niche. You want to be super specialist because that is why people love you. Exactly that. Um, okay, so Dr. Stains. Oh, he's here as well. Awesome, doctor. Welcome. Um, oh, okay, you're answering somebody else's question. Love it. This is why we love our community. This is pretty rad. Uh, the artists haven't just dropped a link to the academy preview if anybody wants to go check it out absolutely go check that out um right what else have we got going come i'm happy to answer all these questions this is i think my caffeine's kicked in to be honest so <laughs> let's let's do this um what else have you guys um got right i think my name is rosie the gamer i think my name is a bad name because i have a gamer isn't so isn't it so I guess they feel 
to be promoting, but I don't. Okay, I'm not kind of sure what you're trying to say here. If you want to rephrase that slightly different, I'm very happy to help you with that. Um, there isn't such a thing as a bad name. It's how you bring yourself across. So let's help you with that. Miraj, say, how do you rank your videos? Great question. Watch this video. That's how you rank it. I literally go step by step telling you how to rank your video. So when this is done, go back and check it out. Um, okay, made with Glee. Very, oh, cool. You happy? Awesome. Love it. Very cool. Thank you for being here. That is very, very cool. Um, by the way, um, I am new here, but this is so informative. Great. Awesome. This is very uh Beriotic is around cool name okay awesome i'm glad you're here we're here to help you i don't care about that 12 people who have disliked it oh no it went up by one uh -huh. who cares i want to help you i want to make sure that you're awesome and you know what you're doing and you don't feel like you're all alone in this youtube game because sometimes let's be honest it gets pretty lonely we look around and everybody else is blowing up why am i not blowing up and you kind of get hard on yourself so don't let them do it this is why we're here for you guys Okay, um, do longer videos rank? Okay, this is a cool question. Scenic Financial, do longer videos rank better than shorter ones if you can retain your audience? If, you, if YouTube looks at two videos, one is a five minute video and people are watching 80% of that video. The next video is a 30 minute video, but people are watching one minute of that video. Which one's gonna get the quality? It's the one that people watch more of. So you want to be quality, quality, quality audience retention audience retention audience retention that is what you got to bring in all the time you want to make sure that you're giving your audience as much quality information so they want more and they stick around and they watch your next video and your next video and your next video that is what youtube rewards as opposed to well i'm going to make an hour video that nobody's going to watch okay so hopefully that helped you answer that thing Anthony Williams, I needed the stream today. I was feeling lost and wondering why I wasn't getting any views. Uh, thanks. Awesome. To me, that is worth its weight in gold. Um, Kinusha, just um, subscribe. I'm sorry, that went up way too quickly, so I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Um, but Anthony, that is why we do this. So I don't care about the dislikes. I care about Anthony. Because Anthony, that is what is going to get Anthony from zero to one. And that's the hardest part. Once you get your feet kind of going and you understand what's going on, it's easier to rank up, but it's getting that initial momentum when it just looks like whatever you're doing isn't working. So Anthony, I appreciate you being here and we're here for you, but look around you, look at all these people, the hundred and so people on here, every, just community, 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 community. Look how everyone's answering each other's question. We love it. We work together and we do better when we all work together. Um, okay, so... Question, is it a good idea to upload it the same video to both YouTube and Facebook? No, 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 move it. A mental movie maker, don't do that. We've seen that that works horribly. Why? It works horribly because the audience is different. The audience on Facebook wants quick, short videos. They want lots of captions. They're probably watching it with the sound off. Same like LinkedIn, business, professional audience wants videos, sound off usually, lots of captions. YouTube, theatrics, lots of music, b-roll different audience because people are in different mindset think of your viewer they're currently on facebook because they've looked at family photos and who's doing what in hawaii and which who bought a new car and who's got a new baby and then your video pops up and it's a 30 minute video i don't have time for this but if it's a three uh, you know three minute video a little teaser and maybe send them off to youtube that could work you gotta experiment don't just copy and paste the same video again and again and again um I'm experimenting something on my Facebook page and I can tell you that I'm just dropping links to my YouTube video. It's no point. Really, really no point. Um, okay, so, uh, Mabuga, Mabugua. I probably butchered that so horribly, it's ridiculous. Okay, for a small creator, approximately how long should I make my video? Just make them as good as your audience wants to watch. Make a one minute video, not a one minute, make a five minute video of people watching. Are they getting to 50%? If they are, that's the that's the magic number. Try push it to six. If they are not watching 50% again, drop it down to five. On my personal channel, I get videos six minutes, 10 minutes, nine minutes, three minutes. Sometimes people just want the answer in and out. That's what I give them. Think of your audience in mind, not about you. It's about your audience, okay? Um, plane spotting aviation, when will Vodai Crew bring out an app? An awesome question, there is one, it's, dare I say, almost done. <laughs> There's lots of stuff that goes into an app and um, 
we don't want to give you an app that just gives you a bit of blah information. We want to make it so useful that you can run your channel with it. So hold on, we there. We all my, we all my, we almost there. Okay. Um, how do you feel about TubeBuddy? I don't feel anything about TubeBuddy. We hang out with these guys. These guys are pretty awesome, um, awesome people. Uh, you know, they're doing their, their thing their way. We're doing it our way. We're focused very much on their creator. And that's, we just got different approaches to YouTube and analytics and the way we do things. I'm not going to get drawn into a vidIQ versus TubeBuddy thing, uh, realistically. I mean, I work for, for vidIQ, so what do you think? Um, okay, should I make a new, okay, uh, Rainbow Wookie, <laughs> cool name. Should I make a new channel if I am changing genre? Ooh, good question. How many subscribers have you got? Is your current um, channel so not even close to your new channel if you're going to shut down your existing channel and just start a new one because remember you're starting from zero is it worth it all of those things if you want to what i've seen works really well migrating people from one channel to another channel to another uh, one channel sorry same channel different topics so i started out with doing a and i'm, I'm kind of done with a i'm going to go into b so i kind of start doing a little bit of b whilst doing lots of a and then eventually I do lots of B's and less A's and then people kind of come with me for the ride. So you just gotta um, kind of think of your channel size and is it worth starting all over again? Or maybe your audience would like your second topic unless it's so weirdly different. You know, if you're talking about cooking on the one channel, uh, on this channel, and now you wanna start doing uh, fashion reviews, it sounds so unrelated, but maybe you can migrate that. Maybe you can bring health into play. There's lots of things that you can do to bring, to bring things in and move the audience across. Um, right, how do you create tags on vidIQ? Trendy production, I don't know what that means. The tags in terms of tags in your video itself, well, you just go and you start typing the tags and your keywords and they'll start popping up and you just click the plus button and then there's your tags. I think that's what you're asking. Okay, um, thank you, everything is, <laughs> is yeah, everything is new. Uh, and by the way, Lily Craft Nook, even when it's old, uh, a day later, YouTube changes something so it's new. Um, the bad king, the bad king, Trey Gaming. Just hit that subscribe button. Boom. Thank you for doing that. Awesome. Um, okay. Is it a good idea to hide your subscriber numbers? No, it's never a good idea. Never, ever, ever, ever a good idea. Why? Because when you go to a channel and they don't show their subscriber numbers, something in your back of your brain says, why are they not showing me the subscriber numbers? What's up? What are they doing? Are they gaming this? Are they buying bots? Are they buying view? All these negative connotation. Why? Be proud of your numbers. I don't care if you have 10, 100, or 1,000. Be proud of your numbers. People who only have 200 subscribers. Well, imagine standing there and saying, okay, guys, today I've got 200 people coming for dinner. That's a lot of people. Always be proud of your numbers. Uh, you know, it's not about getting millions and then being proud of it. It's about being proud from day one. And you know, when I got one, I got 10, I got 100. That is what you should be proud of because those are people who want to watch your content. That is awesome. Uh, so definitely, definitely don't hide subscriber numbers. There isn't a real good reason to do it. Um, right, a time well wasted. <laughs> That's a cool channel. Any advice on gaming uh, for a gaming streamer on YouTube? I'm going very steadily, but would be best uh, to stick with YouTube and stream over Twitch. Uh, okay, so I don't want to go to YouTube over Twitch. I can just tell you that Twitch is gaming platform. So to stand out, you really got to do things very differently on Twitch than you do on YouTube. So let's stick to YouTube. As I say hi to Posk222, who's just subscribed. Thank you. So um, we've, in fact, we've actually just put out a bunch of videos on the vidIQ channel talking about how to succeed as a gaming channel. So if you want to go check it out, I think that's a very, very good place for you to start. Um, right. Uh, any other questions? Okay, multi electro. Can I make related videos on my channel? Yes, as long as it's you're trying, there's got to be a purpose, right? If you're talking about, okay, let's use my channel. I'm talking about, I used to talk about technology. Technology was technology in cars, technology in planes, technology in your phones, in your TV. It's just too much. So what I do is I narrow it down and I niche down. Now it's games, uh, sorry, now it's apps, it's phones, it's gadgets. Those are my three. Somebody approaches me with a new car and I want to review, I'd love to, but it doesn't fit. Okay, it's not in my industry. I want to be known as the specialist. If you want to know how to make your Wi-Fi faster, you're going to go to my channel. Comes up as number one on search. Woohoo! Self 
plugging here. Um, because I've spent time and effort getting to that point to be that specialist. Because when you're the specialist, YouTube recommends you more. So could you do related stuff? Yeah, as long as it's kind of within the area. So I'm gonna experiment now as smart homes on my channel. If it doesn't do well, I'll go back to my basics. It's nothing wrong with experimenting on your channel, but don't experiment too wildly that people are gonna get really, really confused. Okay. Okay. Gamer, not gamer. I'm stuck at 25 subscribers. What can I do to get my gaming channel out there? Uh, God of, okay, so here we go. We do God of War, Bioshock, Batman, uh, and Batman sort of games. Right, here is the tip. When you do lots of things, you're not a specialist. Sorry. I know it's difficult to get your mind about doing one thing, but that is what you gotta do, you need to do. If, if you're the Batman, imagine you were the Bat the ultimate Batman gaming channel, and you did nothing else but Batman. And if I had a Batman question, I would go to your channel. Well, that's how you grow, because now you are my hero. You are the ones gonna help me level up from that. I'm stuck on that level, how do I do this? Maria um, Numez, Nunez, Nunez. Oh wow, I'm so bad at this, it's unbelievable. Okay, that is why you level up as a gaming channel because you're the specialist. The trick is like this, here's what you do guys. Okay, everybody think about this. If you go to a party today and somebody says, hey, I believe you're on YouTube, what do you do on your YouTube channel? The more ands that you tell them, the less focused you are. In other words, oh, on my channel, I do technology and travel and cooking and vlog and gaming. Look how many ands there are. The more ands that you have, the less focus you are. Somebody says to me, hey, what do you do on your channel? Go, I make tech simple so you can make an informed buying choice. That's it. It's very specific. People know what that means and making tech simple, I get it. So I can make a good informed buying decision, I get it. If I did and I do this and I do, then it just gets weird. So as a gaming channel, I would absolutely focus on one game and I would bring your entire personality. I would dress in a Batman outfit every time I stream or broadcast. I would just make people love you and then you can do other stuff later on. Okay, before my voice kind of really dies out completely. Question, uh, question, 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 question. How should a small creator promote their videos on other social media? Great, do clips and teasers of your main video. Tease it out. Maybe you've got a cliffhanger in your video. Maybe there's a part that people are gonna to wanna to watch. Go and snip that out and put that onto your other social media so, and people will naturally wanna see the rest of it going through to your channel. Also, don't forget to engage with other people on social media like Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, um, Byte. Just go and talk to other, leave comments, but not like, cool video, dude, because that doesn't add any value. Goes, oh, I really like the fact that you did this and this and this. It was really awesome. Uh, and that's it. Don't self-promote. Adding value is always awesome. People will naturally go, well, who's this person? Click. And they go back to your channel. If you've got awesome content, they're going to subscribe to you. Alrighty. Who else? Uh, Batman costume, right? <laughs> Can you just imagine this? I tune into a channel and this guy's all in dress in a Batman outfit. We look like we're in the Batcave. There's a Joker in the corner. And it's all a Batman gaming channel. Ah, love it already, right? Um, okay, the this is this channel um, of yours promote other small channels. Now we don't promote other small channels. What we um, on vidIQ, what we do do is a Saturday, a Saturday shout out that you can um, submit your channel to, and if they and then eventually it gets randomly picked out. And if they like what you do, they'll give you a shout out on that. Uh, you know, realistically that's a tool to use it should it would never be my main tool i would use myself as my own promotion tools telling people how awesome my stuff is is always is always epic right um okay should i change my uh, should i change my name to rosie rose um, ft for the win um again you need to look at your audience you need to look at your personality you need to look how, if that's going to affect anything are people going more likely going to remember that versus something else all of these questions come in. It's difficult without seeing your profile and your channel to kind of give you an informed decision. I hope you understand why I'm saying that. Question, what is the best way to get famous on YouTube? Make awesome content. Make awesome content people always love. They love good content. Unite yourself when your friend sends you a message. Say, hey, you've got to check this out. This is rad. Because it's awesome. Okay? It's not because they've got the best lighting or the best B-roll or the best frames per second. They just make good content. Good content always wins absolutely everything else. Um, 
no no game mate yeah is google ads can help can, basically can you use google ads to help your uh to help your youtube algorithm not the algorithm but you can use google ads to help promote your channel your content and expose it to more audience and maybe they'll like enough to go onto your channel and basically subscribe but can you rig the algorithm by spending money on it yeah no yeah, those days are long gone um okay um Whew. okay so okay i'm just seeing there's more is coming up here okay guys my voice is about to go we've been gone for going on for a little while now um i think an hour and a half now a little bit more uh so my voice is pretty much done um let's the final question where can i find live subscriber account you cannot find live subscriber account pots um two 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 because they have youtube has disabled that so you cannot go to social blade anymore and find other channels live subscriber account you can look at your own subscriber account and if you've got vidIQ on the top right hand side we actually show you a live counter of your own channel but you cannot see it for other people as well okay um well-being toolkit my channel is all about well-being so is it too broad and what do you think yeah so that's exactly it well-being is it can be health it can be fitness it can be gym equipment it can be eating healthy it can be routine it can be mindset there's so much going on there i think you kind of need to go okay well what part of well-being do i want to focus in what part of well-being am i actually helping people with and just narrow it down into that you can always broad uh, kind of move to the left and move to the right as you need to but i would definitely start by or kind of focus your content on being the best keto channel the best um exercise whatever it may be focus 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 um there's a channel is an awesome guy called caleb the fitness marshal you guys heard of him um caleb the fitness marshal amazing youtube channel two point something million subscribers all he does he does workout videos that's all he does you're not going to see on his channel um weird and wonderful things with gaming you're not going to see technology reviews because all it does is help people work out Go look up Caleb the Fitness Marshal and you'll see what I, and you'll see what I mean. Um, right, I am okay. Pretty much, uh, pretty much done. My voice is gone, guys. Okay, um, all right, guys, I'm done. <laughs> so my voice is gone. I hope this was helpful. Please, if you've missed anything, go back and watch this from the beginning. On your way out, I would love some thumbs up if you liked this video. That's cool. If you didn't hit the thumbs down button, <laughs> totally cool with that. But if you do liked it, give it a thumbs up. That's always awesome to see you guys being here. Uh, we're going to be doing this again every single week so if you missed anything this will be available on the replay don't worry go and watch tube uh, go and watch go and listen to tube talk t-u-b tube t-u-b-e-t-a-l-k um, because that is where we go very deep into those monetization algorithm how to rank your videos uh, how to do better storytelling there's so much coming up we've got over 200 episodes already I really speak to some of the best in the world to help you guys grow. So absolutely, absolutely go and check it out. We'll say goodbye. Green light, thank you for the thumbs up. B Rain, thank you for the thumbs up. And a magical, an emetical production. I promise one day I'll get that right. Thank you. Um, okay, Bariotic around. Thank you guys. Um, awesome being here. Um, Fairy Terry, I didn't see your question. Sorry about that. Um, guys, this is us. This is what we do. We're here for you as a community. Please don't worry about the haters. You're always going to get them at every single size. Usually it's people that are just jealous of your success. Because guess what? You're doing it. They are not. And that is what makes you great. You're bigger than this. And you're going to rock your channel because you're actually working at it. It's so easy to go to somebody else's channel and get a thumbs down. So easy. It's so much more difficult putting yourself out there like you guys are doing. So I um, hope this was useful. Hope it was cool. And you guys also enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Always fun. And we'll do it again next week. Hit the thumbs up on the way out. Like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as Rob Wilson says, enjoy your video making day. We'll catch you guys next time. Cheers. Ooh.